Welcome back to The Breakfast. It's time for Off the Press, uh, where we have a quick review on stories making the headlines across the country. Uh, we are also uh, going to be uh, joined by our guest uh, this morning, Mr. Chris Wandu um, of uh, CKN News. Thank you so much for stepping in and for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. Good Always morning. a pleasure. Good Always morning. Always how, how did you get here this morning? Was there like Great. traffic for Bro, you? Did you see any free. protesters? And... No, none at all. I, so, I passed through the Todd Mellon Bridge and... Um, and enter through Adela Deck and the rest of them. Okay, the there was no so hassle for you. Maybe they are still sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's start with the Nation newspaper this morning. Expectedly, it is the um, uh, SARS situation that's captured there. And SARS, protesters ground Lagos, Abuja, other cities. Uh, that's a picture of the protests at the Lekki Toll Gate, I believe. Um, there was a massive crowd um, uh, yesterday. There are a couple of writers to that story. A uh, policeman, man killed in Lagos. Extensive police reform coming, says Buhari. Why we're still protesting, that's, I guess, from the protesters uh, on the ground. Um, the 774,000 uh, public works jobs set for takeoff, and that's at the inauguration of it that the president made that speech about um, reforms, police reforms that's been circulated widely. Okonjo Iwiala seeks final push for WTA DG job. Um, on this one, I would say I'm a biased Nigerian. <laughs> she is highly qualified and deserves the chance uh, to that position. Um, more headlines before we bring in uh, Chris um, to share his thoughts on them. New teachers wage a burden, says Wiki. Nigeria signs air pact with US, Morocco, others. Second wave of COVID-19 likely, PTF warns, Akere Dolu. Losing a career a shock. Over to you, Chris. Yes, uh, um, expectedly, uh, we look at the protest. Um, uh, it's just unfortunate that we just have to allow this to get to this point. Um, was it avoidable? Is it avoidable? I, I believe that it was avoidable. Because um, for three times, we've banned and unbanned, quote and unquote, SARS, and we expectedly, we we're expecting the authorities, especially the uh, police hierarchy, to be able to do something with um, SARS. But what they did was just uh, uh, a funny rebranding. And then they moved it from SARS and added an F to the SARS, and they went federal uh, in the activities. If it was localized before, they went full blast with the F added, which made it federal. And um, so many um, Nigerians raised you know, their eyebrows, they, uh, they lost focus. They kept their eye off the ball. Um, they became a terrorist group, quote and unquote, and uh, targeting Nigerians, one million Nigerians, especially the youth. And um, something we definitely have to give. When you push people to the wall, it gets to a point. Even a goat, when you push a goat to a point to the wall, and you, the next thing, what it bounces back, and that is what happened. And um, and um, yes, uh, the, the SARS was banned uh, or dissolved. Let's use the word dissolve, not ban, um, by the IG on Sunday. But the protesters say, no, we are not satisfied. You have done this thrice. Uh, how, how are we sure that we're going to take you seriously this time around? And that is why the protests continue to go. But good enough, the president came out yesterday, uh, which is what uh, most of them wanted to hear from an authority. Don't also forget that the vice president, when he was the acting president, also came out with a directive that um, SARS should be just... So I want to do more than that. Exactly. Yeah. So, so, so they were waiting for actions. And um, so let's see how that pans out. Okay, let, let's move on to this fear by the PDF uh, about the uh, second wave of COVID-19. Um, I'm a bit worried about, um, uh, on that score as well, considering the large crowds we have been seeing in the past days, uh, many of them openly, you know, flouting the rules, safety rules, no social distancing, even the use of face masks is haphazard and um, um, yes, all of that. Yes, a general list from the front. But have we seen some level of leadership on the part of those even in authority? I don't think so. Uh, look at what happened in the, uh, the states where we had election just recently, even on those states. You saw the political rallies where governors were um, attending uh, political rallies full of thousands and hundreds of people uh, without, any, without caring 
about the protocols. And um, so a general say that uh, <laughs> the, the, the ship or the cabin that is, is working always look at the one in front. So if the leadership, if leaders are not showing a good example, it's very, very difficult for you to be able to convince an ordinary person on the street that this thing had, uh, you know, is, uh, is going down. But um, unfortunately, if you go to the Western world, it, there is a hike yeah. um, in the United Kingdom, in, in Spain, Italy, and the rest of them. Um, but what the federal government have done is to be able to ask Nigerians to take their lives in their hands. And the federal government says that seems to have... Um, and they are tired of shouting and crying house uh, uh, and um, trying to make Nigerians to believe that this is possible. And um, schools are reopening. FCT reopened yesterday. Various other schools across the country have reopened, giving the impression that we have it under check. Uh, but it came to a point where also a few days ago that uh, we couldn't record a single death. That in itself was a positive one. Um, but I'm afraid that uh, we might not be able to, we, we've not really got to the point where we think that it's totally gone. Let's continue to push and let individuals take their lives in their hands by doing the right thing. And that is what I think. Okay, uh, before we move on to the next paper, I want you to speak on Okonjo. I, I know that I, you are I, very, I, yeah. I, just, I just have <laughs> to bring up the issue because uh, yeah, that woman yeah, is... Do. It's a fantastic. Yeah, um, yeah. I don't know how. I don't even have a phrase yeah, to. It's a phenomenal. Yes, it's, yeah. You know why I was laughing is uh, well, you were saying okay, you don't forget that the two finalists are women too. So it's not about is, her being yes, a woman. Yes. It's more like her being a Nigerian. No, no. I, I'm yes. just, I'm just pushing. The, I know what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> but as a Nigerian, um, even if she doesn't win, for me. She has really done. She noble. will win. No, I, I'm just saying. I say if if it does, if she doesn't even win, she has done noble. If you remember the number of people that started with her, and for her to be able to qualify for the finals, and um, to even make it more interesting is that the European Union also endorsed her, pe uh, her, yes, her you know, that, her yes. candidature. That in itself speak volume, and this is somebody that have been uh, within the ranks. I got to the uh, top echelon of the World Bank as an MD and the rest of them, came to be finance minister in Nigeria and the rest of them, and has been doing a lot of, after she left Nigeria, she didn't just sit back, she has been doing a lot of things. Um, it was in the Mandela Foundation, it was South Africa Economic Team and the rest of them. She's a global person, and uh, I think what she just did yesterday was to come and thank the president for what he has done for her so far, and Nigeria for what they've done for her so far, and asking us to just push a little more, so that um, I think the election is between the 15th, the final push is between the 15th and 19th of October yeah, will let, be able let's to believe so that against all odds, she will I come. I she will get it. I, 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 I know she will, I I know she will get let it. Me, let me act like an Nigerian child and say pinky fingers crossed. <laughs> 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 Over to your house. It's going yes. to be great for Nigeria. It will. Yes, it will because um, that would be a second record for us because presently uh, a Nigerian also picked up the Adi presidency uh, of the yes, uh, additional African, uh, African uh, Development Bank. That for me is a good one. We are, making, uh, we are going places. Yeah. All right, let's move to the Nigerian Tribune. Uh, one of the uh, big stories that we can find over there, the NSAS uh, protest turns bloody. Uh, President Buhari assures errant policemen will be dealt with. It also um, says here, COVID-19, prepare for second wave of infection, says the PTF. Um, Lawan to Federal, Gov uh, Federal Character Commission, don't allow marginalization of any state. Edo Assembly Speaker impeached. Um, it also says here, ASU stands on UTAS, demonstrates payroll system to National Assembly leadership. Um, of course, uh, once again, uh, the presidency says scrap of SARS, the first step in police reforms, orders investigation into Obama shot killings, a policeman civilian shot dead in Lagos. Um, we also have here the PDP demands complete overhaul and restructuring. Uh, one or two other stories that we can find here on the uh, Nigerian Tribune. Of course, you can also find pictures uh, from the protest yesterday. Uh, the governor of Lagos State was also present at the Koi, uh, uh, the Leki uh, toll gate, uh, speaking with uh, protesters. There was gridlock in Alausa also. And a tanker explosion claims nine in Oshun, eight dead in Ogun State, Lagos Delta auto crashes. Um, these are the major ones that we can find on the Tribune. Uh, but, um, you can uh, show me. Yes, you um, let me start from the tanker explosion, which claims nine life. Um, as of yesterday, information at my disposal is that within the last 24 hours, we've lost 43 people in road crashes, in road crashes. That in itself is, uh, is terrible for me. 
um, as the coordinator of um, the FRC Celebrity Special Marshal, that to me is worrisome. That means um, we are probably losing it. And it could be due to several factors, apart from the human factor, the roads, um, it's rainy season. Um, the terrible one is that these same tankers are the one causing problem. Uh, we saw what happened at Lokoja, we saw what happened in some part of Lagos. Now, I, just, I think we have to find a holistic way of handling issues like this. Um, safety, we are um, Nigerians, we are not really safety conscious. That has always been a problem. And once this happens, we don't tend to investigate properly and make sure that those culpable are brought to itself. book. And that, exactly. is, and that has always been a problem. And then we move to Edo, uh, <laughs> impeachment to a speaker. Well, let's expect it. Uh, there's no a new sheriff. Okay, a new sheriff is a new, sh an old sheriff is now the new sheriff still yeah. in Edo State. Uh, yes. Within the next few months, you can be rest assured there'll be some level of realignment. So quickly also speak mm -hmm. on the um, ASU and their UTAS pay, uh, payment system. <sighs> it's, a, it's a tough one. Um, the president, in his speech a few days ago, said that uh, anybody not captured in that uh, platform will not be paid. And um, I, I continue to wonder why we, cont we will continue to deliberately on issues like this. Um, the federal government feels that every lecturer should be captured uh, in that system to uh, avoid certain irregularities and here and there. But the lecturers are still saying, in fact, they came up with a statement that, oh, but even this president's statement does not categorically state that they will be captured and that in itself. But I, I don't know the problem of us as it were, and I wouldn't blame them, but I believe that if it's to be ensure transparency, everybody should be captured. Okay. But we have seen instances where several uh, parastators and um, even state uh, government agencies, we have, you know the problem, we, you, you know that word, ghost worker. Yes. And I continue to wonder who is that ghost? We continue to see thousands and thousands of people being paid after the uh, collection and computerization and the rest of that. That means that something fundamental that is taking place and corruption itself is still endemic in our system. All right. But I think that um, ASU and federal government should be able to sort this out. Okay. This shouldn't be much of a Hold on. We, 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 we're going to be moving into something in a bit, but I, I want this to be like an introduction into that conversation that okay. you'll be bringing yeah. in. Okay. Um, I want you to speak very briefly on the actions of SARS operatives right after orders are given, do they not take the government seriously when these orders are given? Because they're still on the streets, they're still carrying out their activities. All right. Uh, before you answer that, right. let's uh, go to uh, Lecky uh, Tollgate, where we have our uh, senior uh, correspondent, uh, Fumi, uh, to bring us, uh, Unua Jefe, to bring us up to speed on the latest development. Uh, Fumi, good morning. What is happening where you are at? Good morning, Felicity. So I'm live at the Lecky Tollgate right now. So as you can see behind me, you could just um, look around. There's been no protest just yet. But as I speak to you right now, some of the protesters are already um, gathering. Uh, we, we have heard reports about some of them on, at the corner by the Pinnacle Petrol Station down the road. But right now at the, at the toll gate, everything is going normally. All the cars are open. They're not even taking fees so that there's a free flow of um, traffic. There are no protesters here at this moment. What, what about security officials? Do you see them there? Maybe uh, they are the ones stopping the people? No, um, from, from where I'm standing right now, if you um, take a look, most of the people that I see are the um, Lekki, uh, the LICC um, officials, that the Lekki Tollgate officials, no policemen are around, at least just yet, unless they are not um, with their uniform, no policemen are around just yet. But if you look down, maybe I should just walk down a bit. So can you see that some of the protesters have started blocking the, um, the road now? They're just arriving. Some of them are just arriving now and blocking the way. Okay, uh, we, we just wanted to... to see. They're just arriving just right now, blocking the way and trying to stop motorists from moving. Okay, have any of them said anything to you? Have you spoken to any no, of them? No, not yet, not yet. We're, we're trying to speak. First of all, when we got here, there was absolutely no one here. So as I just went live now, they just started um, arriving. So I have not been able to speak to anyone just yet. If I'm able to lay um, 
hands on someone, I will get them to speak with you live in the studio. But if you, with the, with the image I showed you earlier, of the protesters are now trying to uh, block the way, but about five or ten minutes from when we have been standing here, there has been free flow of traffic, people have been um, moving, but there are no security personnel. I haven't seen any policemen on site this morning. All right, for me, thank you very much for the update. Thank we'll you, come back to you thank in the you. course of thank the you. day. And most important, be safe. I will, I will. Thank you very much. All right. Um, back to you, uh, Chris. Yes. I mean... Sincerely, uh, uh, I think the problem we have with SARS is lack of leadership. It's more of leadership to me. And um, because if we have purposeful leadership within that force, and then we can be able to... I'll give you a practical example. There is a unit within the Nigerian police that is called the um, IRT. I, I don't know if you're aware of that. The IRT is in charge of kidnapping, they go about uh, banditry, um, uh, in charge of um, um, cattle, rustler, name it, all sorts of, even bank robberies and the rest of them. And that unit is headed by one young man called Abakari, the, the DS, the DCP. And they even do more than SARS, I can assure you. But you can never hear anywhere, anytime, being harassed by IRT team. That is leadership. What we have with SARS is that we have a, a unit of, within the police that believe that they are over and above everybody. They don't even, some of them, don't even listen to their senior, uh, senior officers, top officers, because they believe that, that they are a god, sort of, quote and unquote, on their own. And that in itself becomes a problem because they don't, they don't get control. Nobody controls them. And that is why they continue to do the kind of things in impunity. You'll be seeing the videos and the rest of them. Just drag out somebody and say, wait, wait, let me waste time, make a waste time, pyam, and they shoot and they kill. And that person is not brought to book. If we continue to make sure that most of those people that committed those crimes are brought to book, I think, I think to go a long way in checking them. But right now we are reintegrating them into the police system. I don't know the kind of uh, orientation they're going to give them because the same people, all you are just removing is just removing the tag, I am um, SARS, and just uh, uh, putting back in yeah, the police. Just, and that just staying going to be with a the problem. conversation and expanding it a little further. Yes. Um, we spoke to uh, former DSS director, uh, Denise Amakri, earlier okay. on The Breakfast, okay. and his submission was that um, one of the requests by mm -hmm. the protesters was improved remuneration for police officers and says that that alone cannot really engineer the kind of change we're looking for. Uh, do you share that idea as well? I do. It's not up for remuneration. But well, most of the accusation is um, you stop somebody, you want to extort, and uh, all of that. I agree with you. We have to first of all change the orientation, the mentality of the average policeman. An average policeman believes that he's over and above. The fact that he's holding a gun. If you're talking of extortion, are they not making enough money from those extortions? They make more than their salaries from those extortions. You know that. And At the end of yes. SARS collect over 250,000, collect uh, 200,000 from uh, people. In fact, as I was coming this morning, I was listening to somebody on radio, a, a former um, second vice president of NBI. He was giving a narration where a pastor that was coming back in the evening was accosted by um, FSAS officers, and they took him to an ATM to withdraw 250,000 from this to give them, or else they waste him. That was the former vice president of NBA talking on radio this morning. So that is what I'm saying. So the problem is not that they are not making. Most of them are making enough. They're even making how much are we being paid as journalists? Does it mean say yes? Now I'm not going to talk true now. Does it mean that we go go carry God because they are not paying us what we should? We are one of the least paid in this country. <laughs> <laughs> that one now we know this thing now. So does it mean that we have to start engaging? So what I'm saying is that it's, so which is why I believe this is an opportunity for the federal government and the police authorities to be able to get it right. If we don't get it right now, how do we recruit our policemen? Some just enter police just because they don't have anything doing. Some enter there just because they want to make money and the rest of them. When we have the right orientation within the police force, I think that will be a change. And that is my personal opinion. It's not about, okay. yes, we can improve on their remunerations, we can improve on their uh, well-being. Don't, don't forget that the policemen buy their boots, they buy their uniform and the rest of them. I posted that on social media only to realize that it's not the only police. Most of the um, armed forces, the individuals now buy their uniforms and rest on themselves. So what are we talking about? It's just All a right. problem. Sad story. Let, very, very sad indeed. Let, let, let's uh, check what's on the Punch newspaper. I, I, it's still the same thing, actually. <laughs> I just uh, phrased it, differently the yeah. unfortunate situation with the protest. Uh, the Punch newspaper is putting it this way on your screen now. Cop driver killed as protests spread, ground Lagos others. 
Police beat female protester others who learned attack police station. Sanwulu meets Buhari today. IG promises new clubs for new squad. Uh, PDP others demand police overhaul. President pledges deep reforms. Uh, those are some of the headlines. And of course, the picture. Um, I wish we could just put that on the screen now. The pictures from um, across uh, the country. Uh, there you have it, of protesters demanding uh, for what they want from the government. Underneath that uh, very, you know, very vivid picture, yeah. uh, you see other headlines. Uh, away from the protest, there is the sad development on the Lagos Ibado Expressway. Uh, 17 people were killed in Oshu Tanka fire. Uh, dismissed cop steals police job applicant's phone cash. I'm shocked I lost in a career three LGs. That's uh, from Akere Dolu. There are more headlines there, but um, I think you could just uh, speak on... The only difference um, there is the... Yeah. Uh, I lost in... Uh, in Accra, um, the uh, elected, yeah, newly elected. You have a thought to share on that one? Yeah, well, uh, he'll be shocked. Um, his opponent is from that as it's Jagede is from Accra as it's. Yeah. So, especially, you expect his people to vote for him. And it has been that consistent. Last, um, in the last election, also, Jagede was on the ballot. And he was, he's from Owo area. Um, Jagede is from Accra. It's, it's only in Edo State that we saw is a Yamunlu losing. His local government <laughs> to uh, or Baseki. but most often than not, you realize that some of these most of these politicians have their own base, and their people will always vote for them. So, but the governor should see himself as a governor of one of those states and just make sure that development goes around, uh, whether you are from Akure or any part of the state. <laughs> they should be able to get some of the semblance right. of governance. <laughs> Thank you very much Thank for you very coming much. Thank um, you very much for on me. The Breakfast this morning. Your time and input is appreciated. Thank you very much for us, as always. And of course, uh, with you, Osaogi, always a pleasure to be here with always you. Always an interesting morning. <laughs> thanks for joining us and thanks for staying with us so far.